Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am super excited to share with you these three fun projects made using the Celebration Tidings Bundle from the Stampin' Up! August December mini catalog. Now this bundle is on page, let me just pull it out, 56 and 57. It's actually part of a suite um, in the catalog, in the bundle is right here. So in Canada, the bundle is priced at $63.75, includes a stamp set and an awesome set of dies, which I'm going to show you up close and personal. So let's have a look at those. So our stamp set um, features images and sentiments for all sorts of different occasions. We've got Christmas, we've got Halloween, we've got Thanksgiving, and we've got a pretty much any occasion just for you. Um, so along with the sentiments, we have great imagery that actually fits into the curves of the die cut labels. Now that doesn't mean they're only for use with the labels. You will see that um, in the projects we're going to make today. And then of course we have these awesome label dies. So the celebration labels has one, two, three, four, five sets of, or five different labels, five sizes of label. This largest one is actually larger than a card front. Okay. It is huge. And I'm actually going to show you a couple of really cool uses for that large die. People look at it and go, what do I do with it? Cause it's too big for a card front. Well, they're all kinds of fun treat holders and things that you can do. So I'm going to show you some ideas. And then of course we have some cute little um, sort of embellishments that we can add. Some little sprigs, a couple of spiders, some hearts, and then these little guys are actually intended to go in the corners, in these sort of corners of the label to add just a little bit of die cut detail. So that is the die, the die set and the stamp set. Now that bundle of course is priced at a discount when you buy both together. Um, you get them for 10% off. So if you're gonna buy one, you may as well get both because you get a deal, right? <laughs> Okay, so before we get going, I'm just going to pull up my video here and see if anybody is watching with me today. Let's just see who is out there. Come on, iPad. There we go. Let's see who's here. Oh, we've got Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi, Louise. Hi, Sue. Hi, Bonnie and Wendy. Thanks for joining me today. It is a gorgeous fall day here in Southern Ontario. Um, a little bit crisp, but beautiful sunshine, which is much appreciated after the gloomy day we had yesterday. So in any case, we are going to get right to it. I'm going to start with Halloween because Halloween is coming up quick, right? It's next weekend. So I'm going to show you a couple of fun ideas. One is a shaker card. We're going to start with that. And then we also have a really fun treat holder, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So first of all, the shaker card. So to start, I have um, a piece of basic black cardstock, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that is cut to five and a quarter by four inches. Okay. Then I die cut using, I think it's the second largest label or so, sorry, second smallest, second smallest label die. And then I emboss. So that's a really important order. Okay. So you um, cut your cardstock, you, um, you die cut, and then you emboss. Okay. If you emboss and then die cut, you're going to squish your embossing and you don't want to do that. Okay. All right. Oh, I see Claire's joined us and Debbie. Oh, don't talk to me about snow, Debbie. I don't want to hear about it. Not ready for that yet. Hi, Gail from Oakville. How are you? So we've got our piece already prepared, okay? And then to create our shaker, we need to have a window sheet, right? We have to fill in that space that we have cut out with the label. So I have here a piece of window sheet. It is, I think, three and a half by four and a half. Yes, three and a half by four and a half inches. So we're gonna glue that to the back side of our embossed and die cut piece of basic black cardstock. So you can do that with whatever adhesive um, makes you happy. I'm just going to use a little bit of stamp and seal and just kind of go very gently around. With stamp and seal, you want to apply very little pressure, okay? Where people are having problems with stamp and seal, a lot of the times that they're pressing too hard. So you don't have to press hard at all to get the um, tape to transfer. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that window sheet to the back side of my cardstock, okay? So now I have my window. 
All right, now we need to create a pocket for our shaker item. So to do that, we're going to use some of the foam adhesive strips. The foam adhesive strips are in the catalog on the adhesives page, and they're specifically intended for making shaker cards. So I'm just gonna take off a strip, and I'm gonna start sort of at the top of my label here and work my way around. Now you'll notice I'm not getting too, too close to the opening of the window, because I don't wanna see the strip um, when I'm looking in the window of my shaker card. Um, but I also don't want to go too far out because then I'm going to need more filling to fill out my card. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to need a little bit more here. So I'll just snip a little bit off of this one. Oops, this is the border piece. Anybody else not waste their, their dimensional borders? I hope you don't because they are perfectly good adhesive. All right, so we'll get rid of that little bit of excess. We'll use that when we're adhering to our card front. Okay, so we have our um, foam sheets on here, and I just realized I should probably get rid of this background. <laughs> there we go. I don't want to mess up my background when I'm stamping here. All right, so we are going to add our filling. Now, I decided to have a little fun with the filling, and I die cut a whole bunch of little bitty bats. These are, I, I cut these using the Halloween magic dies. Those are the ones I featured last week. Um, so I cut them a whole bunch of them. You get actually, I think the die cuts three at a time. So it didn't take me long. Um, from the black glitter paper. And honestly, this paper is awesome. Now I'm going to actually lay out my bats on my backing piece. So to create our shaker pocket, we need something for the background. So for this, I have used a Halloween colored um, piece of the plaid tidings DSP, which is part of that same suite that the bundle comes from. And it is cut to four and a half by three and a half as well. And I'm just going to take and lay out my bats. I want to make sure that the sparkly side is up. So I'm just going to kind of lay them in the center of my DSP here. I'm just going to kind of pile them on there. Okay. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra filler for my shaker card. I'm using the sequence for everything. Now these also are in the holiday catalog. They come packaged and sorted by color or color family sort of, which is awesome because it makes it much easier. I can't tell you how many hours of my life I have wasted <laughs> sorting sequins to get just the colors I wanted. So I'm going to use what's left of these sort of orange and gold colored ones. I've got a couple of rogue red ones, but that's okay. We'll get these out of here. I don't have too many of these left. Can you tell I've been doing a lot of fall shaker cards? <laughs> and then we'll add just a few of the gold and silver just to fill that up a little bit more. Okay, um, this I love that way these are packaged because it makes it really easy to keep the colors sorted. You just kind of keep them in their little compartments and away you go. So we'll get that out of the way. And now we're ready to apply our um, front to our DSP. So I want to make sure because this is a plaid um, sort of a linear rig. I kind of want it to be straight when I put my card front on. So I'm going to make sure my plaid paper is lined up on my grid paper, nice and straight. And then I'm going to peel off my backing from my foam adhesive strips. Come here, you. And then I'm going to layer this and I'm just going to really look. It's very hard to do and I'm not looking straight down. You guys can tell me how crooked this is. I'm hoping it's not. Um, we're just going to press that into place and just seal it. Okay. Oh, we caught a little bit of the edge. And there's my shaker. Not fun. All those bats flying around in there. Okay, so that is the hard part of this card. The rest is pretty straightforward. I have a pumpkin pie card base. This is going to form the foundation of the base. Oh, you like that scoop suit? That's actually I got that at the dollar store years ago. They're like for beading, right? I think there were three different sizes. Um, and yeah, it's perfect for doing, for using sequins and any of those kind of shaker fillers. Hi, Kathy Angus. How are you? Um, so our pumpkin pie piece, this is our card base. It's five and a half by eight and a half. It's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold that in half along our score line and crisp it up. And then this is going to get glued onto our card front. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this, this, these adhesive strips are a little bit thicker than dimensionals. So I'm not going to use dimensionals to adhere this because it won't lie flat. So what I'm going to do actually is use a couple more little bits of the adhesive sheet, or sorry, of, of the foam strips. 
to help adhere my card front so it lies flat. Okay, so I'm gonna put some across here. I'm gonna put a couple of little bits down the sides. And again, I'm just using up the edges because why not, right? Hi, Margie, how are you? Aren't they cute bats? I love those bats. That's my favorite die from that Halloween magic die set. Okay, so I have my little adhesive strips on here. I'm not gonna worry about the bottom because I'm actually gonna put some um, liquid glue on the back of the DSP. And when all is said and done, this is going to all lay nice and flat and secured on the front of my card. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of all the backings on these little strips. And we're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of our DSP. And then we're gonna take and adhere that to our card base. I guess it doesn't really matter which way's up on this one. And again, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna move this a little closer. I may not be very perfectly on camera, but I need to see. <laughs> it's very hard to get this centered when I'm not looking straight down on it. All right, there we go. There is our card front done, okay? Easy, right? Shaker cards are so easy with these adhesive strips. Such a piece of cake. All right. Now we're going to decorate the front of our card. So I have here a stitched rectangle. This is cut with the stitched rectangle dies from Whisper White Cardstock. And I'm going to stamp the Happy Haunting sentiment from the Celebration Tiding stamp set in Memento Black Ink. So we'll just ink that up. Oh, that doesn't look like it's very well inked. Let's add a little more. And we'll just stamp that down right on there like that. Okay. Then we're going to layer that. Now, before we layer it onto our, um, our this is just a strip. It's what, uh, what is it? An inch, inch wide strip of scrap um, pumpkin pie. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to that strip. And then I'm going to trim my banner ends, okay? Just to get an idea of how much space I want. This is going to go right across the front of my window there. So we'll go ahead and stick that down. Oh, wait a minute. I used dimensionals on my original. Oopsie. Let's bring in the dimensionals because we can. And dimensionals are better. Thanks, Margie. I'm glad you're doing good. It will be... It's, I bet you had a very relaxing Thanksgiving weekend not doing Rockton Fair. <laughs> I was thinking about you actually on the weekend thinking, wow. What's Margie doing with herself on Thanksgiving? All right, so I have my um, sentiment adhered to my strip. And then I'm going to take my tailored tag punch and I'm going to nip out um, a banner end on each end on either side here. And I'm just kind of going, I don't know. That's not quite even. I'm going to go in a little bit further on this one. There we go. That's better. I don't know, I'm just taking out, it's about, I don't know, maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch on either end. Um, and then that is going to lay across there. But before we do that, we are gonna add some of this yummy metallic mesh ribbon. So to do that, we're going to add some stamp and seal to the back of that strip. And then we're gonna start our, our ribbon kind of extending past the end of the strip. And then we're just gonna kind of like ruffle it and distress it and we kind of want it to look messy okay i want it to kind of extend above and below the strip because it's supposed to look kind of like spider web right and then we'll trim off from the roll okay and we have sort of a, a shimmery banner there i'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter and then that is going to go on to the front of our card with some dimensionals, okay? So you're gonna have to press your dimensionals quite firmly into place here uh, because they do not like to stick to that mesh very well. And I have the weirdest sheet of dimensionals right now. All of the backing papers are cut through and it's kind of annoying because they I get the, I get the whole, the backing as well as the, the dimensional when I peel it off the sheet. All right, we'll add a couple more. So I'm, I'm being generous with my dimensionals. I know that bothers some of you. but I wanna make sure that my sentiment stays on the front of my card. So we're gonna get rid of these backings and we'll pop this on right across the front of the card and press it into place. Okay, just like that. Isn't that fun? 
And then we're going to add a little hint of spider web. Now I added this in the corners of my window. So what I did is I just kind of cut like a pie shape, a piece of pie. So I'm kind of cutting it into thirds. So there is one third. And then we'll cut this other piece here. Okay, now these, this was die cut using the Pika Hoot dies. It's, it's, uh, this little spider web dies is in the Pika Hoot dies. It's cut from silver foil cardstock and I put some adhesive sheet on the back. So what I'm going to do is peel off the backing and most of the little bits come out with it, which I love. There's one little guy in there that doesn't want to come out. There we go. And we're going to tuck the, actually, I think I might tuck these in the opposite corners that I did on my sample, just because my sentiment's a little bit lower than on my sample. So we're going to tuck these in just under the corners of our window there. Just tuck that in there. Come on. In you go. There we go. So we have a little hint of silver spider web peeking out. We're going to put another little guy down in the other corner. So this is another third of my die cut. We'll get rid of that little bit as well. Dimensionals are always better, Louise. You should know that by now. It is, there is never any doubt about whether or not to add dimensionals. When in doubt, pop it up is my life's motto. <laughs> okay, this does not want to tuck in where I want it to tuck in. Maybe we'll go with one spider web on this card. This is not cooperating. Come on, work with me. Let's see if we can tuck it in here. I have had quite the day, you guys, I gotta tell you. Um, Stella came in this morning after being out for like 10 minutes. She's, she's indoors all night. We let her out like for 10 minutes in the morning to get some fresh air. And then she comes in, she's indoors all day while we're at school. And she came in with an injured tail. We have no idea how she injured it, but she couldn't raise it. She wouldn't sit on it. She wouldn't let us touch it. It was not a good scene. So I ended up taking the day off and taking her to the vet. And it's just been this whole big ordeal of a day. Needless to say, $500 later, <laughs> she doesn't have a broken tail. Um, she's injured it somehow and, um, yeah, she's on pain meds and whatever. It's just, yeah. So this day has been a little nutty. Anywho, <laughs> I got my spider web in there. So now our last touch, we're going to add a couple of little die cut spiders. So these are also in that celebration tidying stamp set. And I found a use for black dimensionals. I don't know if you saw my video a couple weeks ago where I was talking about the fact that I couldn't really understand the point of black dimensionals. Well, I now understand because on this card, having the black dimensionals just makes my spiders kind of blend into the back. So yeah, I probably could have used white. I actually used white on my sample, but then I'm like, oh wait, I have black and I can use them. So there we go. Look at that, black dimensionals, who knew? All right, so there we go. That is our fun little shaker card. All right, we'll shake up those bats so you can see them flying in behind there. Now on the inside of my sample, I added a whisper white layer and um, some stamped images. So this is one of the, the trim images from the stamp set and then a couple more creepy little spiders. Okay, so that is our card. Yes, poor Stella, she's not had a good day. She was very angry at me when I shoved her in the carrier to take her to the vet. She yelled at me all the way to the vet. It's just not been a good day for any of us. She's back home now and she won't speak to me. She won't let me anywhere near her actually. She's quite, quite, quite unhappy with me, but she'll get over it. We got to give her pain meds tonight and she'll be feeling just fine after those. <laughs> All right. So now I decided to make a fun coordinating treat holder for this. So this is kind of like a secret treat holder. This just looks kind of like a tag, but it has a secret hiding place for a little mini Kit Kat or whatever your favorite chocolate bar is. You can see the Kit Kat on the back, um, but it's just a really cute little way to package up mini chocolate bars. I thought, especially since Halloween is kind of not going to be as big an event this year, um, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to make these up for the kids that do come? If any come, I don't know. We usually don't get very many in our neighborhood, but um, I thought these would be fun to make up. I'm also going to make some up for my um, my dev ed kiddos at school because they love celebrating Halloween, and uh, so I'll make these up for them and and bring them in on Halloween. Or well, I guess the day before Halloween because Halloween's on a Saturday. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make this. It's super easy, super quick, and uses almost no materials. <laughs> like that's it, really. <laughs> okay, so. I started, this is one size larger than I used for the window, okay? So it is the middle die, middle size die in the Celebration Labels dies. 
and I die cut it and then embossed it with the spider web or cobweb embossing folder. Okay. So then I'm going to show you how to create the little sort of, um, the little slits, the back, little strap that holds your treat, your treat into place. Okay. So you want to be working with, on your grid paper, if at all possible, if you have grid paper, um, just because it helps with measuring. You don't have to use a pencil. You can just kind of eyeball it with a ruler, okay? If you don't have um, grid paper, then you will have to use um, a pencil and mar mark this out ahead of time. Okay, so I've got my um, label on, and I have this little divot on the label sort of centered on that center line on my grid, okay? So I'm going to go up two squares, which is half an inch, and I'm gonna put my ruler straight across. And then I'm going to put, I'm gonna start half an inch in from the edge. So this right now is at three and a half. So I'm gonna start half an inch in. I'm gonna cut straight across until I'm half an inch from the other edge. Okay, so I'm gonna start at four on this, even though it's really only half an inch. I'm not putting this quite at zero. Okay, so I'm just taking and cutting a slit like that. All right, so now I'm going to reposition this back to where I had it because I shouldn't have picked it up. I wasn't done cutting. And then I'm going to go two squares below that center line. And again, I'm going to just center, put my, my ruler on there. So I'm flush with the, uh, the grid line, two squares below. And then again, I'm going to start a half inch in from the left edge and cut straight across to half inch from the right edge. Okay, and now I have my little sort of holder for my Kit Kat. So that will slide in easy peasy, just like that. See, so easy. Now you could leave it like that, totally. Like if you wanted to really low budget it, you could just die cut and be done with it. But I thought why not decorate because you know, that's what we do, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have a little label that is cut from the more of the same DSP, the Plaid Tidings DSP. Um, this is the same size label that I used on my um, shaker card. Okay, so it's cut from the DSP. I have another rectangle, stitch rectangle, exactly the same as I used on the shaker card as well. Okay, I kind of intended these to coordinate. I'm thinking I might send them out to my niece and nephew at my brother's place. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my happy haunting, just like we did on the last one, just like that in the memento black. And then I have a mango melody two inch circle. So this is punched using the two inch circle punch. I'm gonna bring in some pumpkin pie ink and my dauber. And I'm gonna sponge all the way around. Ooh, I've got a black fingerprint on that. Let's use, oh, where's the black fingerprint coming from? <laughs> I've got black inks on a finger somewhere. There it is. Okay, we don't wanna have black fingerprints on our sun or on our moon. So we're gonna use the other side that has less black <laughs> and we can hide it with the bat. All right, so we're gonna add just a bit of sponging all the way around there, okay? And then we can go ahead and glue on our label. So this is gonna go on kind of, well, maybe we can hide the fingerprint with the label. Oh, look at that, we can. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that on right about there. Okay, it's gonna get glued flat. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape on one end. And we do want our label to be straight. So we'll put it right about there, okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually pop this up. Now, before we do that, I have another little silver spider web that I've cut using that same die. And I need to get rid of a couple more little bits here. Now, I did not put adhesive sheets on the back of this because I'm actually gonna be adhering it to the back of my label like this, okay? So I'm gonna put some tape on the back of my label and I'm going to adhere my little spider web right about there. Man, I have black somewhere because I'm getting fingerprints on my label too. Wowza, this is just about typical of this day, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so we are going to add some dimensionals to the back of our sentiment and our moon and adhere that to our die cut label. Just like that, right about there. Okay, and then I have a couple more little bats. So we're going to add them. We're gonna pop one up with a black dimensional, a black mini dimensional, I should say. Okay, 
So we'll pop one up right here. And then this little guy is going to go flat and we'll put him on with a glue dot. So we'll pop that on there. He's going to kind of fly in behind. And then of course we have one more little spider. We'll add him with another black dimensional kind of creeping on the label from the spider web. Okay, so there's our label. And then that is just going to get adhered to this strip that's holding our KitKat in place. So all I did literally was take and add a bit of adhesive with the KitKat in there. It's easier to do that way. And then just center this. And again, I may have difficulty doing this because I cannot look straight down on it, but we'll kind of guess and hope and pray and see what happens. Oh, it's not too bad. And there you go. Isn't that cute? So fun. I do happen to have more Kit Kats. I kind of have a stash down here. Don't tell my family. Um, <laughs> mainly because I've been making a lot of treat holders. I have not been eating them. Honestly, I haven't. I'm waiting till Halloween. Honest. Really. Okay, so there's my treat holder. You like that? So fun and easy. And how cute would these be to um, do for stocking stuffers, right? You could just add... Um, cute little chocolates or you could do um, you could do ones with lip balm or anything like that just a really cute fun idea for treat holders you like that okay all right let's move on to Christmas we're fast forwarding a couple of months and we are going to make a gift card holder because well I think I'll be giving a lot of gift cards this year I'm definitely not going to a mall <laughs> anytime soon so I'm going to show you sort of how this works and then I'll show you how to make it Okay, so this unties and opens up and then this piece opens up and we have our Tim Hortons gift card, of course, because why not, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this. It is really easy. Um, so to start, I had a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. So this is four and a quarter by 11 inches. So it's just half a sheet of cardstock. Okay. And I have embossed or not embossed it scored at, at two and a quarter on either end. So I would put it in my, my trimmer two and a quarter and then flipped it and two and a, or, sorry, two and three quarters, not two and one quarter, two and three quarters and two and three quarters. Okay. Then to get this decorative end, I took the largest die. Let me just grab it here. And I'll grab my cutting plates. I'm not going to actually cut it. I've already cut one, but I'm going to show you how I did it. So I took my, um, my one, this is one of my two and three quarter inch ends, and I laid the largest die on it so that the point at the end edge of the die goes right up to the edge of my cardstock. And the, the die is actually just a shade wider than my cardstock. So it kind of lays over it like that. Okay, now this is the important part. You're only going to put your plate up to the score line. Okay, you don't want to go any farther because you're going to nip into your card here. You don't want to do that. Okay, so you're only going to go up as far as the score line with your plate and then feed it through your machine. All right, you do the same thing on the other end. And when you're done, you get something that looks like that. Okay. Easy peasy and a great way to use that mega huge label die. Okay, I have another way to use it. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and fold along our score lines. And we end up with a gatefold. Okay, now there's a gap here. That's okay. Uh, that's intentional uh, because we cut off part right at the edge of the die. So that's all right. Um, but that is our card front. Okay, now before we do anything else, we're going to do a little bit of stamping on the front of this. So I have this sort of, I don't know, it's like a mistletoe spray um, image from the stamp set. And I'm using Mary Merlot ink, okay? I want the wanted the stamped um, images to be more noticeable than doing tone on tone. So I'm doing it that shows a darker ink so that they really show up against the cherry cobbler. So I'm going to stamp a few times along the folded edge. Okay, and same thing on the other side. And it's nice to turn the, the stamp a little bit so that it doesn't look like the exact same image all the way across, okay? And isn't that lovely? It almost looks embossed when you use a shade darker ink um, on the Cherry Cobbler, okay? It's a really nice effect. All right, let's get that out of the way. I just need to take a sip of water because I'm really dry. And then we are going to do the insert 
Okay, so the insert for our, our card, this is a piece of Whisper White, just regular Whisper White cardstock. It's five and a quarter by eight inches. So five and a quarter by eight, scored in the middle at four. Okay, I will put these measurements up for you afterwards. So we are gonna go ahead and fold along our score line. And then I have a piece of that beautiful holiday looking plaid tidings paper on the back it's black and white but I really like this and it is cut to the exact same size as this so this is five and a quarter by four okay and we are going to layer that right over the front of that that panel all right I think I'm going to use some liquid glue just to make sure I can get that wiggled exactly into place so we'll use a little bit of liquid glue and we're gonna pop this on and just take a second and make sure that that gets centered correctly. Okay, so that is going to go inside our card centered like that. Okay, so for this one, I can add a little bit of tape. Uh oh, I'm out of seal. <laughs> do I have any seal plus in here? Oh, yes I do, saved by the seal plus. <laughs> All right, we'll use a little bit of this to finish this one off. So we're gonna go ahead and center that right about there. Okay, so you can see how this is starting to come together. And then we're gonna decorate our label for the front. So in here, I have the smallest label cut from Whisper White cardstock. And then the second smallest label cut from Crumb Cake and embossed with the Winter Snow embossing folder. Okay, so on this little white label, we are gonna stamp our Merry Christmas, and I'm gonna use Cherry Cobbler ink for that. So we'll ink up our Merry Christmas and stamp that centered on our white label. Okay, then we are going to pop that up onto our Cherry Cobbler label. Okay, so we're just gonna use a couple of dimensionals, and by couple, I mean four. <laughs> because, you know, we want it to hold together, right? Hello, June, how are you? It's okay for being late. You can always go back and watch the replay later. That's the beautiful thing about recorded video. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pop that on there. And then I have some of these little die cut sprigs. Let me just dump them out. I have, I think, six of them. So this die is in the Celebration Labels dies. Okay, it's this cute little spray. It could read as an evergreen or it could just be greenery. It could be just about anything. Uh, but for Christmas, it's going to be evergreen. So we are going to add oh, some of these little sprigs um, around our labels. We're going to tuck them in under the Whisper White label. So we'll just kind of tuck them in here. So there's one. And two and let's see there's two different directions with these so I want to make sure I'm not having them all go the same way we'll add this little guy in here just like that okay and then we're gonna do the same thing in the opposite corner so we'll put one little guy in here and another little guy over here whoopsie Glue dot stuck to my finger. And then the last one, we will tuck in. I wanna hide that glue dot. There we go. Okay, so there is my greenery. Now that is going to go on the front of our gatefold. However, we have to add our gold cord to be able to tie it shut. So I have here, this is from the, it's from the August, December mini. It's the, I can't remember the name of the suite. Anyway, it's at the back in the index. <laughs> it comes with some wide shaded spruce ribbon and this gold cord, okay? So this is about a yard of the gold cord. And what I'm going to do is just, I folded it in half and I'm going to lay it behind my um, gift card holder here. And I'm going to just kind of pull these ends so that they're just about even, okay? Cause I'm gonna tie my bow right about here. Okay, so I want about, uh, about the same length. There we go, okay? So then I'm gonna take and just 
tape down a little bit here with some tear and tape. So I'm gonna take just a little strip of tear and tape. And we're gonna just tack that into place. And I'm just, I'm just basically putting it where that little notch is in the label. So right about there, okay. And then I'm gonna peel off my backing and I'm going to add some dimensionals before I adhere my label. So I'm only applying my adhesive to the left side of the gatefold. Again, if I put it on both sides, what'll happen? <laughs> I will glue my card shut. Ask me how I know. Some things you have to learn the hard way, right? All right, so we're gonna get rid of our backings and we're gonna pop our label on centered on the front of our card just like that okay and then that's going to hold that cord in place when it's not tied up so then i'm just going to snip my ends and i can tie it shut okay i'm not going to do that right now actually that's not centered at all can i get that off of there i just noted how notice how off center that is Whew. let's see you going to work with me dimensionals sometimes they're kind sometimes oh look at that it came off that doesn't always happen. <laughs> you know what I was doing? I was looking at that white line on the plaid instead of looking at the actual space between my sides. There we go. That's better. That's going to hold better. All right. Now we just have a little bit more to do on the inside of our um, card. We need our pocket for our gift card. So this was a two inch by six inch strip of DSP. So it was what the other piece of this that I cut off. Okay, when I cut this panel and I cut it down to five and a quarter and then I used this same die, but this time I used it on the side. So I basically put this in and die cut to get a decorative edge on my pocket. Okay, so I just die cut the strip to get that. Super easy. But another great way to use that extra large label die. So then we're going to add a little bit of tape along the edges and the straight edge, not the decorative edge. And then that is going to get adhered inside our Whisper White panel here. Just going to line that up nice and flush with the edge. Okay. And then we have our little pocket for our gift card. Isn't that cute? So easy. And then we're going to put a just a sample little just for you greeting in there. So I have a little scrap strip of Whisper White cardstock and my just for you stamp. And we'll stamp that in Cherry Cobbler. And now can I get this centered without looking at it straight? That doesn't even look like it's inked. Why does that not look like it's inked? I don't know. I am just not seeing things straight. Yeah, that's not straight. <laughs> it is very hard to stamp straight when you're not looking straight. That's better. Okay, so then we're gonna just cut some little banner ends again. I'll just bring back my Taylor Tag Punch. So we'll just nip out the ends to create our little banner. Get rid of all this excess. And a little bit there. Okay, and then that is ready to go inside our card. Thanks, Judy, glad you like that idea. So we'll add a couple of dimensionals to the back of this. And get rid of our backings. And we'll pop it inside our card. Okay, just centered on that little pocket. Okay, then we're ready to tie this shut. So you're just gonna bring your cord around. Now this is a little bit unwieldy to tie the first time, but once you've tied it and it's been held in a, in a bow for a while, after that it's really easy to tie. You just kinda have to break down the cord a little bit. Um, so once it's tied and, and been left tied for a day or so, it's no problem to tie. It's a little bit tricky the first time. So I'm just taking both thicknesses of cord and tying a knot and then a bow and playing around with my tails until I get a bow that I like. Oh, where's the tail of that one? There it is. Okay, so that is how we close it. And then we have to add a little bit of bling because, well, we just do. So I have some red rhinestones and I'm going to bring in my take your pick and just add a few little 
red berries to my greenery here. Come here, you. Okay, and then we'll add a couple more on this side. And the other cool thing about this is that the rhinestones actually help the greenery life ladder. There we go. So cute, so cute and easy. Like easy gift card holder. Um, so these label dies, honestly, you guys, when I first saw them, I was like, ah, do I really need another set of labels? But there is, there are so many more possibilities with this set because they have such a large, like this large label die, we have nothing that's that size. Um, you could actually cut a card base <laughs> with this die. It's huge. Um, and being able to cut those decorative edges, I really like that idea. Um, and it's, it's a great die. So Check it out again in the catalog. Get the bundle because the bundle is well. If you're gonna get the if you're gonna get one, you need to get both. I learned that the hard way. There have been too many times where I bought just the stamp set or just the dies and regretted it, <laughs> and gone back and bought the other thing later and paid full price. Um, so get the bundle. That's just the way to go. So I'm gonna tuck my Kit Kat back in here, and I'll bring the projects back. There we go, all three. Okay, I hope you like those, you guys, today. And uh, that's it for me. I gotta go up and check my mashed potatoes. I'm making pot roast for dinner. So <laughs> I gotta go up and see how they're doing. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by today. I hope you have a great week and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at five. Bye for now.